Hello and welcome to our notes on dividing fractions. So we're going to talk about dividing fractions today. So let's start with talking about the multiplicative inverse. So first I just want to see from you guys where have we heard about multiplicative inverse before? So in the past, you most likely have heard about multiplicative inverse. If you have not, the multiplicative inverse is also called the reciprocal. And what that means is we're going to take a fraction or a number and we're going to flip it. So if we have the fraction 2 thirds, its reciprocal is, or its multiplicative inverse, is 3 over 2. We took and we flipped it. We put the 3 on top and the 2 on bottom instead. Another example would be, if we had the number 4. The number 4 we know is also as a fraction 4 over 1. So if we have our reciprocal of 4, it's going to become 1 over 4 because we flipped it. We put the 1 on top and the 4 on the bottom. So the, import, the reason we're talking about this is to divide by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So first let's practice some multiplicative inverses. Uh, so for example A, the multiplicative inverse, this is 7 over 16, so all we're going to do is flip it, we're going to make it 16 over 7. To do mixed numbers, we're going to turn it into an improper fraction first. So we're going to need to do 3 times 6. So 3 times 6 is 18. So it's going to become negative 18 plus 1 over 3, which is negative 19 over 3. And then our reciprocal would be negative 3 over 19. Great. Example C is negative 7 ninths. Why don't you give example C a try and see what you get for the answer? All right, so when we're doing these, we don't need to change positive or negative. We're just flipping the fraction. So instead of ne negative 7 over 9, it's going to be negative 9 over 7. And then why don't you also give example D a try. So for example D, first you need to do 2 times 12, which is 24. And that means it's going to become 24 plus 1 over 12, which is 25 over 12, which means that your reciprocal is going to be 12 over 25 because we're going to flip it.
All right, so example E through J says find each quotient and write it in simplest form. So now we're going to apply the dividing symbol. Uh, we could also call this keep change flip when we do this because we're going to keep the first term, change division to multiplication, and flip our second fraction. So 4 ninths divided by 3 fifths is the same as doing 4 ninths times the reciprocal of 3 fifths, which is 5 over 3. And now that we have flipped this and turned it into a multiplication problem, we can do multiplying. So 4 times 5 is 20, and 9 times 3 is 27. Then we need to see if we can simplify it all. 20 over 27 does not simplify, so that would be the end of that one. Example F is 3 sevenths divided by 8. So this is why I had that one example. Uh, remember that a whole number as a fraction is just that number over 1. So to fix this one, to turn it into a multiplication problem, we would turn it into 3 sevenths times 8 uh, times, sorry, 1 over 8. And then we would do 3 times 1 is 3, and 7 times 8 is 56. And then we would want to see if 56 is divisible by 3 at all so that we could simplify. It is not, so this is also simplest form. All right, example G. So for example G, I'm going to have you guys help out a little bit. And when you're doing, these, uh, you can use the slash for your fraction bar, and then for the divided part, because we also use slash for division, um, instead write out the word divided by. Oh wait, sorry, we're not going to be divided. So use uh, the asterisk, that's shift six, I believe, use the little asterisk, it might be shift eight, um, for multiplying. So what I want you guys to do is, what is our new uh, expression going to be when we switch this to multiplication? All right, so our new expression, what we're going to do is we're going to keep that first number, the negative one ninth. We're going to change it to multiplication, and then we're going to flip the second fraction. So this is going to give us, uh, I like to put my negative symbol with the top number. Negative 1 times 12 is negative 12, and 9 times 5 is 45. Uh, in this case, we can simplify. Both of these are divisible by 3, at the very least. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so that's going to give us negative 4. 45 divided by 3 is 15. So that does simplify. All right, next one. Uh, we're going to have you guys do a little bit with this as well. So first let's convert these to uh, improper fractions. So we need to do 4 times 3, which is 12, and 3 times 9, which is 27. So this is going to become 12 plus 2 over 3, and this would be 27 plus 1 over 9, that's 14 over 3, oops, and 28 over 9. So now that we have those as improper fractions, we can do our keep change flip. 
So we're going to keep that 14 over 3 the same. And we're going to flip the 28 over 9. So it's going to become 9 over 28. And then we're going to multiply. So 14 times 9 is 126. And 3 times 28 is 84. So let's see. These might both be divisible by 9 at least. Nope. Uh, they are divisible by 3, so let's see where that gives us, gets us. So 126 divided by 3 is 42. 84 divided by 3 is 28. Uh, not done yet. Uh, 42 and 28 are both divisible by 7. Forty-two divided by seven is six. Twenty-eight divided by seven is four. Oh, still not done. And then six and four are both divisible by two. So it's three over two is our final answer for this one. All right, next one, once again, we're going to convert these. 6 times 8 is 48. 4 times 4 is 16. So it's going to become 48 plus 3 over 8. And negative 16 plus 1 over 4. So 48 plus 3 is 51. So 51 over 8 divided by 16 plus 1 is 17. All right, so I rewrote this with the division still in here. Why don't you guys once again tell me what would this be when we switch it to multiplication? How are we going to rewrite this so that we can do it multiplying instead? Right, so it's going to become 51 over 8 times negative 4 over 17. All right, 51 times 4 is 204. And 8 times 17 is 136. Let's see here. These are both definitely divisible by 2, but that's not a big jump, so let's see if they're divisible by 4. All right, they're both divisible by 4. Are they both divisible by 8? They're not both divisible by 8. All right, so let's start with dividing by 4. That's going to give us negative 51 over 34. Hmm, okay. And then these are also both divisible by 17. 51 divided by 17 is 3. 34 divided by 17 is 2. So this is our final answer of negative 3 over 2. And then for this next one, remember negative 12 would become negative 12 over 1. Why don't you guys go ahead, you watch me uh, do the converting a bunch of times. 
uh, go ahead and do this whole question. All right, so when you're all done with this question, you should have ended up with negative one-fifth. Uh, if you got the negative 12 over 60, then you still did the overall problem correctly. You did the uh, multiply by the opposite part, and then you just didn't finish simplifying. So let's take a look at this last part here. So uh, for our last part, when we're doing division, since this is pre-algebra, algebra relies heavily on variables, which are numbers that hold the place of a letter. Um, if you have the same letter on the top and the bottom of a fraction, those letters cancel out. So that means cross them out. They're gone. So let's take a look at what that looks like down here for our last couple examples. Find each quotient right in simplest form. So that means eliminate any uh, numbers or anything like that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to turn these into the multiplication problem. So we're going to keep this first one the same, so it's still going to be 5 and then 3AB. And then we're going to multiply by, we're going to flip this one. So what was on the top will go to the bottom, and what was on the bottom will go to the top. So we'll have A, B, C, and 15. When we multiply numbers and letters, they just all go together. If there's multiple numbers to multiply, you'll multiply those numbers. But if it's 5 times A, B, C, then it's just going to be 5 A, B, C. And then down here, we have 3 times 15. It's 3 A, B times 15. We're still going to do the 3 times 15, which is 45. And then we'll have A and B still. So when we have numbers in the top and the bottom, they cross out. So we have an A in the top and an A in the bottom. They're going to cross out and they go away. We have a B in the top and a B in the bottom. They also cross out and they go away. So we're not quite done, but we're going to rewrite this to make it a little cleaner to look at. So now we have 5. We did not cross out the C, so that's still there, over 45. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to take a look at that 5 and that 45 and see if we can simplify those. So they are both divisible by 5. And that's going to give us 5 divided by 5 is 1. So we have 1C and 45 divided by 5 is 9. When we have that 1 with the letter, and you guys will get used to this, if you have a 1 with a letter, you don't need to write that 1. So this is just C over 9. Let's take a look at another one. So once again, the first thing we're going to do, and I'm actually going to write it up here to give us more room, is we're going to keep that first one the same, 5AB over 6 times, we're going to flip this so it's going to become 7 over 10 B. So once again, when we multiply 5AB, it's going to be 5 times 7, which is 35. And then the AB will just come along. And then we're going to do 6 times 10 is 60. And then that B will just come along. So do you guys see any letters in this that we can cross out? Any letters that cancel out? We have a B in the top and a B in the bottom, so those will cancel out. And then let's go right into our next part. We want to see if we can simplify that 35 and 60. They ended up 5 and a 0, so I do know they're at least divisible by 5. 35 divided by 5 is 7. 
60 divided by 5 is 12. And then we still have that A. So now we have 7A over 12, and that is our final answer here. All right, and let's do this last one here. So X, Y over 4, that's going to stay the same. And it's going to be times 8 over X. We're going to flip this. So why don't you guys give this last one a try and see what you get here. All right, so if you stopped at 2y over 1, you're still technically correct. Uh, but keep in mind, just like when we have like 8 over 1, that's the same as 8. So 2y over 1 is the same as 2y. Uh, if you stopped at 8y over 4, then once again, you still need to finish simplifying the 8 and the 4. That's it for our fractions lesson. If you have any questions, uh, dividing fractions lesson, if you have questions, put them in at the end of the video.